the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, your almighty power is made known chiefly in showing mercy. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we may be called to repentance and made partakers of your heavenly treasures through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading appointed for this sixth Sunday after Pentecost is from Ezekiel chapter 2. He said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their, their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants also are impudent and stubborn. I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except in my weaknesses. Though, if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Amen. 
Jesus went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the, the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could not do and he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief, and he went out among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over, un, over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty.
we hear again a few of the verses from the appointed reading of 2 Corinthians 12, where Paul says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. And then at verse seven, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a, mes a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weaknesses. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In the name of Jesus. <coughs> Three heavens, Paul speaks of. 2 Corinthians 12.8, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. So the first heaven is the sky. Look up into the clouds. See the rain coming down. Sometimes we speak of the sky as heaven too. The second heaven, look up into the stars, the constellations, the galaxies, Gaze into the heavens. That's heaven number two. That's the way they spoke then. We do it much the same. The third heaven, it's not of creation. It's the throne of God. It's the heavenly council of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's not in the clouds. They're created. That's the first heaven. It's not in the stars. They're created too. Not in space. That's the second heaven. The third heaven is to be at the face of God, the creator of all. So the Lord gave Paul a view of that council chamber, of the proceedings. This is where the Father hears the intercession of the Son, who is interceding for the benefit of the sinner on created earth. Where the Father hears the Son's intercession and declares the sinner innocent by the atoning blood presented by the Son. And where then the Father and the Son together send forth the Holy Spirit to deliver the verdict of good news from the council in heaven down to sinners on earth so that whatever sins are forgiven on earth are forgiven in heaven. And so that the sinners hear it and have faith that Jesus is their justifier. Paul had been caught up into that heaven to hear the voice of God. How was Paul caught up into this heaven to witness the heavenly council? Paul himself says he doesn't know. 2 Corinthians 12, 3. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. It is, it would seem, something to brag about, to boast. But Paul says he will not boast. He should not. He doesn't even speak of himself in the first person to take credit for that part. He describes this being caught up into heaven in the third person, referring to himself as if he were on the outside of himself looking in. I know a man in Christ who 13 years ago was caught up into the third heaven. But he's speaking, of course, of himself. When he was on that road to Damascus and Jesus spoke to him from heaven. <coughs> but Paul doesn't even know how this personal revelation of heaven happened. In the body, out of the body, I don't know, he says. How proud of yourself would you be if the Lord had ushered you into the heavenly council to witness what no one else is given to see. How puffed up, how conceited would we be if we were privy to God's voice in a way belonging to no one else? 2 Corinthians 12, 7. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, 
a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. We're not told what Paul's thorn in the flesh was. You can look in the commentaries on the Bible and the church fathers, there's guesses. Was it a limp in his walk? That would have been terrible, as much walking as he had to do. Maybe an infectious eye disease. There was one that was common in the world at that time, a bacterial infection. We don't know. There's many speculations. We might even have our own. Was it the painful memory of how Paul had participated in the stoning of Stephen before Jesus had called Paul to the faith? Did that keep nagging at him? We're not told. But the thorn was given to him by the Lord for a reason. And here we might step back for a moment to consider our own thorns in the flesh. Is this perhaps why Paul didn't reveal what his thorn was? If he said that it was this infectious eye disease, then I would have said, well, I don't have that. So maybe he did it so that we could think here also of our own thorns and whatever they might be. Maybe ours would be thorns such as a seemingly chronic sickness, perhaps a pain in the joints or some problem in the back that the doctors can't seem to trace down, perhaps some painful memory of a past shame. Whatever it is of our fleshly life, the burdens that seem to not go away, we may think of our own thorns and then hear Paul's words of why the thorn in the flesh was given. Not punishment, not payback for some past sin, not retribution for what he did to Stephen, not a lesson to teach him how to be better. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this thorn in the flesh, says Paul, that it should leave me. But the Lord said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. Paul's thorn in the flesh, not punishment, not a lesson, not payback, but a gift. Paul actually uses that word. A gift so that Paul would not look at all to his flesh for confidence and comfort of living a victorious Christian life. He would look only to the Lord's grace, which is sufficient. Grace. That's what the Lord says. Grace is to be forgiven of all sin. Grace is to live in the Lord's mercy, to know that God looks upon you with a smile, for he hears the intercession of his son who died for you. Grace is not power in life, not power in the way the world thinks of it. Grace is not a changed life. Grace is not a victorious life or an effective life or a strong life or any other metric our sinful world would come up with. Grace is the power of God. But the power of God looks like no power we have ever seen on earth. Grace, the power of God, is Jesus Christ crucified. It's a dead man on the cross. Grace is Jesus standing in a room of 11 apostles, and instead of holding them accountable for their doubt and their sin, saying to them, peace to you, your sin is forgiven. Grace is God coming to us, not in power to crush us in our sin, but in the weakness of a spoken word given from the mouth even of a sinful pastor. But that word spoken in weakness is the power of God saving the sinner. Grace is God coming not in power to overcome, our senses, or to take control of our emotions and make us feel happy, but coming in common bread and wine. No different than bread or wine we could serve at our own tables, but it is the bread and wine that the Lord has taken up into his use and combined with his word in order to give to us himself, his body and blood, for the forgiveness of our sins. Grace, then, is Jesus sending the apostles out two by two with no impressive clothing, no money, but to go to the homes of sinners to speak the word of the gift of the, 
of repentance and the forgiveness of sins to them and to cast out demons. No earthly power, no might, just 12 common men sent to speak the gospel. In that weakness is the power of God saving sinners. The thorn in the flesh, the affliction, the suffering, it's not retribution. It's not a lesson to be stronger. It's not a payback. It's a gift. A gift even of Satan afflicting us, but a gift so that we would know that God's grace is everything, is sufficient for us, and his power is made full in weakness. The only God we have, then, is this one who comes in weakness. The only God we have is the crucified God, the one who comes always in weakness to the sinner to give grace, the God who willingly suffers for the sinner. Any other God, any God known by worldly success, by a victorious life, whatever that might mean, a God known by strength in this world, that's a God of our own making. And scripture calls that an idol. But the true God, the only one we want to know, is the one hanging on the cross. He comes in weakness. He comes in words of gospel spoken from the weak mouth of a man, in the promise of the water and the word, in the table set for sinners. He comes to forgive our sins. This weakness is the power of God saving sinners. Our God is the one on the cross. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let me make a quick announcement. Offerings, because we're changing the way we're doing it a little bit. When we started the, um, all the, the routines with the um, COVID outbreak and all of that, we quit receiving the offering plates in the pews and we put them in back for people to put their offerings in as they enter or as they leave. So this week we're going to start again, not passing them down the pews. We're not sure if we're ready for that yet. Um, according to some of our conversations. But we will be bringing the offering plates forward during the offertory. If you forgot to put your offering in as you came in, that's fine. Still, you can leave it there on your way out, um, and it will, be, it will be collected in the gift of the church. But we will start having the offertory again. This morning, for the offertory, we will sing hymn 717.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father in heaven, look with mercy upon us, your needy children on earth. Grant us grace that your children on earth may look to you alone for every good gift. Your holy name may be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word, the faithful administration of your sacraments, and through the fervent love of our lives, Lord, in your mercy. Father, let your name be holy among us as it is in heaven. Grant us grace that your name may be holy to us. Let us rejoice in the bestowal of your name in baptism. Turn away from us all false teaching, all false prayers, and all evil living, Lord, in your mercy. Grant that your kingdom may come to us and grow through the preaching of your gospel. Send your Holy Spirit to those blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom, that they would be brought to know your Son, Jesus Christ, in true faith through the fellowship of your church, Lord, in your mercy. Break and hinder every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, and keep us steadfast in word until we die. Grant us to be strengthened by your Spirit to do and suffer your will both in life and in death, in good and in evil. We ask your grace especially for those going through afflictions, including the sick and the hospitalized, Sonia, Laura, Diane, John, Elaine, Evie, Rhonda, Jim, Eileen, Jan, Shannon, Kylie, and those who are shut in, including Margot, Connie, Barbara, and Flossie. We pray for your blessing also upon those celebrating wedding anniversaries and your gift of the man and the woman being made one flesh, including your servants, Jay and Cynthia, Bob and Karen, Eric and Alicia, Leif and Sonia, Justin and Aaron, Garland and Sharon, Jim and Jan, Steve and Ann. Give to all people the faith and strength to pray, not my will, but thine be done, Lord, in your mercy. Grant us, Father, our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares. Grant us good government and protect us from violence. Bless Joseph, our president, Michelle, our governor, and Timothy, our mayor, and all those serving to protect the innocent and the defenseless, especially the child still in the womb, and to bring justice to those who do harm. We pray in thankfulness, especially on this day of our national celebration of our Independence Day, giving thanks for the freedoms in this land and for those who serve us in uniform, praying that they would be kept in safety and that all citizens would be thankful for the gifts of rule of law and the protection of the innocent. Help us to trust that you will provide for our every need so that our lives may overflow with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive us, Father, our sins. Let us freely forgive those who sin against us. Root out all bitterness and hatred from the hearts of your people, that they may be filled with your mercy. Let us look upon our brothers and sisters in the church, not in condemnation and judgment, but with eyes of kindness, forgiveness, and joy. Grant us a good conscience before you, so that no sin would ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy. Protect us, Father, in time of trial and temptation. Help us by your Spirit to subdue our sinful nature, to despise the sinful world and its ways, and to overcome the devil and his deceits. Keep us from conversations of gossip and accusation. Let our tongue speak words of encouragement and consolation to honor our neighbor's reputation, always extolling your gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Guard and keep us, Holy Father, 
so that the devil, the world, and our sinful nature may not deceive us or mislead us into false faith, despair, or other great shame and vice. Deliver us from every evil of body and soul, both now and forevermore, that we may at last leave this valley of sorrow with joy and enter into the company of your saints in light, joining in their song of praise that never ends. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Drink them to preserve you in body and soul now, unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, body and soul unto life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen.
will give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. couple announcements, uh, mostly in your bulletin, but uh, to draw our attention to. First of all, we have the, uh, the seminar for pastors. This is the class that is where a professor from Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne, will be coming for a week and uh, giving a class for, for pastors who are coming into town. So for that, our fellowship group here and Linda Stoker um, do a lot of work to provide for these pastors, coffee, <clears throat> treats and food and everything. So if you would like to help, there is a sign-up sheet for things that need to be brought in, um, uh, and maybe also for, for other help. I'm not sure right now, but just check the sign-up sheet back in the fellowship hall or check with Linda Stoker. So we're looking forward to that. Also for next week, I'm going to be in Colorado with our youth group going to the Higher Things Conference in Fort Collins. That does mean that we will not have the Wednesday morning, uh, morning prayer service here uh, and, and other things such as that. But, but we look forward to me being well rested after being with the youth for a week. Um, I think that's it for announcements, but just to also that uh, we hope everyone has a great Fourth of July, as we celebrate all the gifts our Lord gives to our nation and, and those who have served our nation. Um, we do want to welcome any guests that we have with us, especially if you're a guest. Uh, it's an honor to be with you at the Lord's name. And if you're able, as you leave the Lord's service, uh, go back into the fellowship hall and have coffee with us. And if you're able past that, uh, stick around for the Bible, Bible class and Sunday school hour. But let us go forth in our Lord's name.